Welcome back into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Initially, we had planned doing injury news, but I think this is still pretty noteworthy. Coming out of ESPN, they did their NFL trade deadline primer for all 32 teams. They mentioned three different possible trade candidates for the Cowboys and one potential trade target, which I think is pretty reflective of a team that is more likely to be sellers than buyers at this year's trade deadline. So before we get into those four names, will the Cowboys make a trade before this year's 2024 NFL trade deadline? One for yes, zero for no. Sound off in the comments. The first player mentioned on this list, and you know maybe the most realistic and or the most feasible in terms of not being as big of a name as the other three guys we'll get to, was Damone Clark. Now, Clark was, was specifically mentioned in this case by ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. And Fowler wrote, Damone Clark plays behind DeMarvion Overshone and Eric Kendricks. And I would also argue Maurice Leafow mostly too. So do the Cowboys field calls there? Remember, this is a team that doesn't like to make phone calls. They like to receive phone calls and then operate beyond that. Clark has played a little bit this year. But until Eric Kendricks got hurt, he was a non-factor on defense. He had fallen out of the rotation altogether. It was in no particular order, Overshone, Kendricks, and Maurice Leofau operating over Damone Clark. In theory, again, we'll know more about injury stuff Wednesday, Thursday afternoon. And Kendricks is back. That makes Clark a backup again. They have Nick Vigil. They have Buddy Johnson. They don't need six linebackers to get to the season. Plus, they have Darius Harrison call up if they need to as well. So Clark, as a former day three pick, only fell that far because of the back issue, right? He had the played his rookie year, which I was pretty surprised by. He started a lot of games last year in 2023. The instincts just haven't come along the way that so many of us were hoping they were going to. So specifically for Damone Clark here, kind of get the vibe the coaching staff doesn't view him as a, as a big fit. That's one thing. I'm still taking a long-term view with all my players on my roster because – 2025, if you're under contract, you can still be here, right? Clark is under contract. If the front office also doesn't see a big role for him in 2025, then yeah, trading to Moan Clark makes sense. Getting back some type of asset, I'm actually on board with doing. I just don't think it'd be a very expensive asset. I think you're getting a day three pick mid to late at best. Three more names to come, but should the Cowboys sell at the NFL trade? He kind of heard Jerry Jones hint that that might be the path they choose to pursue if they make trades. Should they sell? Why for yes and for no? Go vote the pin comment of today's show. Selling on Damone Clark is one thing. Selling on Osa Odigizua is an entirely different beast altogether. Now, this one comes from Todd Archer. Now, Todd Archer does not just throw stuff at a wall and see what happens. If he's putting names on it, there is a reason for that. So this absolutely raised an eyebrow for me. Here's what Todd wrote. Osa is entering the final year of his, of his deal, and it just might be time for to move on for both sides. He has not been as productive this year as he was in his first three, and a team might want to take a chance on him finding his form with free agency looming. Todd's not wrong. Osa has not been nearly as good this year. And when you mention, when you think about what Jerry Jones said, his comments about, you know, if, if guys don't fit, I'm paraphrasing, Mike Zimmer, the way they fit Dan Quinn, maybe we could move on. I don't know if they're going to want to pay Osa. He, he, he has been a, a first half, second half guy where he's played really well in the first half of seasons, not great in the second half, and he hasn't really shown up this year. Now, I think in general, the just decimation up front has caused a negative on Osa. He's the, the guy that teams are most locked in on, right? He is also the one good defense tackle you have. We, we've seen nine good quarters from Mozzie Smith. Carlos Watkins is a, a, you know, just a guy. Linval Joseph has the occasional good rep, but also gets blown off the ball five yards down the field. They're going to bring back Jordan Phillips from injured reserve, potentially. His practice window is now open, but he's a borderline NPC. Like, it's not, it's not a good group. So if, hypothetically you were to trade away your only good defensive tackle, your only borderline playable defensive tackle. Apologies for the slander, but the, the group's been pretty bad this year. That is a clear sign. It's over. Like, if, if you trade Osa, you're, you've given up on this season. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's something that the Cowboys will consider once we get closer to the trade deadline. But that would be a pretty big, we're selling, 
and were given up on the 2024 campaign. Today's Cowboys report is brought to you by Ollie. Clean, fresh nutrition for your dog in five flavors they will absolutely love. They are offering a fantastic deal to let you to let you and your pup taste test a personalized meal plan. Get 60% off your first box of meals when you use promo code chat sports over at Ollie.com. Here's how it works. You fill out Ollie's 30-second quiz, and they'll create a customized meal plan. Ollie then crunches the numbers and re recommends the right recipes and daily pr uh, portions for your pup. For any first-timers out there, Ollie will send you your first your, your, your pup's first box with two weeks' worth of meals and a guide on how to gradually switch them over to their new diet. You can customize your plan as well. They have three different meal plans to choose from, from a full fresh plan, fresh topper plan, or a mixed plan with their freshly baked recipes. My dog Finn has to put up with me and my wife's busy work schedules and also soon-to-be three-year-old Olivia, so having energy is kind of important for him. So head to ollie.com. Tell them about your dog and use code chat sports and you'll get 60% off your first box of meals when you subscribe today. That's O-L-L-I-E.com. Enter code chat sports, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, to get 60% off your first box. They offer a clean bowl guarantee on their first box, so if you're not completely satisfied, you can get your money back. Let's go to the biggest name on this list. That is Trayvon Diggs. And just like Osa, this one actually comes from Todd Archer, which gives it more credibility for me than even if it would come from Fowler or Graziano or whoever. Todd wrote, if the Cowboys are out of playoff contention by the trade deadline, even if they lose out, they still might not be, They then maybe Trayvon Diggs could make some sense to teams. The two-time Pro Bowl corner is making $11 million this season, $9 million salary next year does not become fully guaranteed until the fifth day of the 2025 league year. This would be a pretty big shocker to me because Diggs is a is one of like four guys you have under contract this year. Now, Dallas did not restructure his deal the way they did with Terrence Steele, which was still kind of surprising to me. So his overall cap hit this year is $14.11 million. The new team would owe him actually a prorated 12 million. There's also um, roster bonuses that are included beyond just the, the, the base salary. But that number becomes like it's like $7 million you have to pay him. That's not that bad. The cap hit is 14.25 in 2025. It's got $9 million guaranteed. Of note, 2025, 26, and 27, the new team in theory wouldn't actually owe all of that. They'd owe, um, to subtract 4.25, which is his leftover signing bonus stuff. So Diggs is not that expensive for a new team, frankly, nor for his current team. It's really not that expensive. And I still think, despite my issues with him tackling, look, he's not, he's not a good, good tackler. He's just not. He's probably never going to be. It's probably just not who he is. He makes a bunch of plays on the football. And if your front was better, we wouldn't notice as much about Diggs not being a good, a good tackler here. Now, I want to make one thing clear. Despite what the Jones boys might try to feed you, you can absolutely pay Trayvon Diggs and Deron Bland if you want to. But if you were to trade Trayvon Diggs, that makes it pretty clear you're riding with Deron Bland as your number one corner. Now, Diggs and coverage has been fine this year when he's not matched up against Jamison Williams because that's just a bad matchup for him. But the, the run defense has been so bad, the Cowboys have been able to tee off in the passing game. The one game they did, he had a pick against the Browns. It's an ecosystem, right? If you were to trade Trayvon Diggs, you're starting Deron Bland and Kalen Carson all year? That's my issue with trading away a long-term piece like Diggs, who's under contract. I now need to go get another corner, potentially. Because maybe Kalen Carson's a piece. He's also a fifth-round pick. Maybe he's not. Jay Lou's a free agent. So I would expect a big haul if you were to even consider trading Diggs. Probably a bigger haul than I could feasibly get. So with that in mind... What draft pick would you want back in a hypothetical Trayvon Diggs trade? Let me know in the comments section of today's show. The last player mentioned by ESPN is Travis Etienne. Not the first time we've had this conversation, so we won't go quite in depth uh, as we did on the others. Here's what front of the show Ben Solak wrote for ESPN. If we assume that a return to health on defense will also bring a return to form for the entire team, 
then the biggest need in Dallas is at running back, where the Cowboys are totally lacking juice. Where have you heard that before? Oh, by me. Uh, Etienne is far from a perfect runner and has arguably now lost his job to Tank Bigsby, but he still has big play potential and can catch the ball out of the backfield. He'd bring more explosiveness to Rico Dowdle's role. We'll go a little bit more in depth on this. Again, not too much because we spent time on it. We are losing our sub battle, though, against the 49ers. They have almost 100 more subs since the week began than we do. So let's change that. Hit that sub button for more free Cowboys YouTube videos. I do think that ETN brings you some of the things that you don't have. I, I, again, I, I think Ben's spot on in terms of, like, the fit. You, you need big plays. I think you need a better pass catcher. Dowdle's fine. But I do think even a, you know, a Tony Pollard type of player would be better for you than what you have right now. I'm not saying it's the same contract cost, which it's not, by the way. Um, to make it clear, ETN is not nearly as expensive. He's only like $2 million this year. That's the prorated figure. It's actually pretty affordable. You'd have to move on from somebody else in the backfield that, that is, I would say, probably Deuce Vaughn uh, more than anybody else would be probably your most likely path uh, from in terms of roster moves. But uh, I don't think this team is going to be really involved, and I think ETN's probably too expensive unless I can get him for a day three pick somehow. But if you're adding a back, this is the type of player I want, someone who offers big plays and explosive ability. You just don't have that right now at all in your backfield. 